We never can't not do nothing and today I will show how to measure the effective rim diameter of a wheel that is already built, of a rim that is already built. And uh, I will link in this video's description uh, my website articles and uh, videos where I demonstrated how to measure the effective rim diameter but here I will show it how it's done on a wheel that is already built. Now I will just briefly here explain the effective rim diameter is the diameter of the rim that is relevant for calculating optimal spoke lengths. What I mean by that is that I don't care about the outer size, the diameter, but I am interested in measuring the length or the, the diameter from the nipple start where it, where it is attached to the rim to the opposite side, that is the diameter we are looking for. And here in this part of the video I will try to, if I manage to technically insert uh, an image from my website that demonstrates that, but here I will just briefly explain. Here we have two rims that are built for the same size of the wheel, of the tire, sorry, that is the 28 inch tire, but uh, this rim is a bit deeper in section than this one. So the, the path that the spokes need to, uh, to transverse to come from the hub's flanges to the, to the rim is shorter on this than on this, this rim that is in my left hand and on your right hand side. So that is why it's important to measure this. And uh, why, uh, another reason why it's important to measure is because uh, manufacturers, sorry, is because manufacturers don't always give correct data when they give uh, effective rim diameters information. I am always more uh, feel safer when I measure it myself. And why would anyone uh, measure a rim that is already in a built wheel? Why not disassemble the wheel then take a nice measurement of rim's effective diameter? That is uh, easier and probably more precise and accurate way of measuring, but at least that is often the case here in Serbia. Uh, if I have a wheel that is already, uh, it has a hub that is getting worn and needs replacing, I can get a hub and then I need to, uh, if that hub is different than the original hub, by, by the flange diameter and where the holes for, for the spokes are placed, then I need to calculate the optimal spoke length for that other hub. I won't be able to reuse the old spokes. The problem is that uh, sometimes it takes a month or longer to find the spokes of the optimal length. So in practice, for me, it is a lot more convenient to measure the effective rim diameter of a built wheel, then uh, measure the new hub and calculate the optimal spoke lengths get the needed spokes and only after I have sourced the spokes will I completely disassemble the wheel and then build a new one because the old one will keep running while the spokes are being sourced. Okay, I hope I'll explain this properly now for the tools needed. We will need this like a small screwdriver which is convenient to help us remove the rim tape and it will also help me to show some things probably. And when, as whenever I'm building wheels, uh, pen and paper, the old fashioned way is very helpful to write things down and calculate them. Then I'm not sure what uh, this tool is called in English, but that's what we need, vernier calipers, I think correct me if I'm wrong. It can be improvised using some sort of sticks or even a screwdriver than measuring, but this will make it a lot faster and easier. We will need some kind of tape measure. This one will do. And something to use to mark things. And for this video, I will try to work with this tape. I think it's uh, more easy to see it clearly than using uh, graphite pencil pencil yes or some marker or something so we'll try to see how this works and 
Finally, I will disassemble the wheel and compare the results we got using method of an already built wheel to what we will get when we measure the rim separately when it's without spokes. So let's show the procedure. I will also be using a ruler, steel ruler to make things for measuring easier. And the first thing that we need to measure is the distance from the, the end of the nipple to the top of the rim so that we can subtract that from the calculated complete diameter and get the effective rim diameter. So let's show that. Uh, we start by removing the rim tape and that can be done using a screwdriver. Let's try to show it. coming off. This one was pretty stuck and it's getting torn a bit. It's an old one. Okay, so we have it removed. Now we can measure. twenty one point five millimeters and we will deduce this sorry subtract this the thickness of this this ruler because I used it to get a more easy precise measurement and here let's see how thick it is one millimeter exactly so it's twenty point five millimeters Okay, now that we have measured the, the, th the depth that we wanted, we need to measure the, the whole rim diameter. And in order to do that, I will first mark it. The next thing I will mark is the starting point on the floor from which we will measure. Now I'm aligning the start of the marker with the start of the, of the mark on the floor and I will start rolling the wheel around making sure to be careful not to slide it to, so I because then I would get the wrong measurement. Okay, now we can measure the distance between our two marks. <coughs> I'm using this to make my life easier, so I can just push this against the heavy wooden block. One thousand nine hundred and ninety millimeters exactly.
here if I calculate it correctly this rim should be of 592 millimeters in the effective rim diameter okay when I measure these rims of this manufacturer it usually uh, measures to 592 millimeters and I will re re I will unlace this wheel and measure it and if it turns out that I have somehow made a mistake I'll write a comment uh, below the video but uh, this method usually gives relatively accurate results if you do everything carefully and with patience it's not perfect it is a lot easier a lot faster and I would say more accurate and precise to measure rim without any spokes when it's not laced but when you have to improvise this method does the job and it's it's quite helpful and it certainly has helped me a lot to uh, to cope with building wheels so that people don't have to wait without being able to ride their bicycles for long so that's it uh, thank you for watching do try this at home and uh, you don't have to be a professional bicycle mechanic to measure the effective rim diameter of your rims and build good bicycle wheels. Cheers!